coach afterwards, uh, Maryland, uh, on behalf of our team too, just much respect to the Maryland players, uh, the coaching staff, and their fans. Uh, what they've gone through, the tragedy in the spring, and uh, that was a tremendous effort. And uh, you know, I hear about attendance. It, it was uh, when I looked up, it was packed. Uh, and also, as I always do, thank Buckeye Nation for being there full force. I would think we had almost half the stadium. <laughs> And that was a, a much appreciation for for that. Uh, defense champions, Draymond Jones, uh, great out champion, Chase Young at two sacks, and then Malik Harrison had a tackle with three tackles for loss and a fumble recovery. Uh, player of the game was Tough Portland. And then uh, offense, offense, he had uh, offensive line, uh, which played 105 plays. Uh, Isaiah Prince graded out uh, well. Uh, Demetrius Knox, Michael Jordan, Malcolm Pridgen, and I think Josh might be his first one. Josh came in and played, I should have had that for you, how many uh, plays he played, but he played uh, played hard for us. At tight end, we had two of them. Uh, uh, Luke Farrell graded out a champion, and Rashad Berry uh, with two catches for 15 yards, and I think they were both in overtime, if I remember. Uh, running back, he had Demario McCall, which is great to see. Uh, especially when the fourth, in the fourth quarter, with a minute 40 left on his kick return. And then wide receivers, Terry McLaurin, four reception, 118 yards. Paris, five touches. Johnny Dixon, six receptions for 102 yards. Uh, ben Victor, uh, two big ones. And then KJ Hill, three catches, 21 yards, and a, uh, 19 yards, excuse me, and a, a great touchdown. Co-players of the game were Dwayne Haskins, 28 of 38 for 464 total yards. He had six total touchdowns. Ran the ball the best he has, uh, obviously. And J.K. Dobbins, I just can't say enough about that guy. Mike Weber had a quad contusion. And he had uh, 37 carries for 203 yards <coughs> and a touchdown. Special teams, uh, player of the game was Demario McCall. A 42-yard kick re return to uh, get us some field position to strike with no timeouts left. Josh Proctor played well, two tackles inside the 20. And, and, uh, uh, one tackle inside the 20, two total tackles on kickoff uh, coverage. And Drew Christman went down the punt, or they uh, fair caught, I believe, a punt on the five yard line. Um, I just had to chat with our players about that really tough decision on 38 yard line, fourth and five. And uh, if it wasn't for a guy like Drew, I would have probably went for in that situation, which, you know, that's you're putting the defense in bad situation if you don't get it. We went, um, punted the ball down to the five yard line. They went three and out, seven plays later, we uh, scored a touchdown. And that was because of our punt execution and uh, our gunners and Drew uh, Christman. So I'll answer any questions for you. Front row left, Mitch. Urban, after watching the video, um, what have you been able to discern about the defense and what happened? Uh, a bunch of things happened, obviously. It was uh, uh, very alarming to see that I thought we uh, started to crack the rock the last two weeks as far as playing good defense, elimination of big plays, and then uh, obviously it was, it, was, it was not good. And so uh, we're not blaming people, whether it be missed tackle, alignment, uh, scheme, whatever it is. It's just a matter of getting ready for this one. So yeah, we uh, watched it with the defense, and uh, uh, just it was not good. Did missed tackles? Was that a problem? Again? Eight missed tackles for the game. You wanted your goal was to be around five. Uh, the missed tackles were huge uh, hits, and uh, that was a part of it. Uh, Bill, Urban, uh, you talked a lot about Dwayne and toughness after the game at Maryland. Um, what does it do for an offense when when that mindset starts to emanate from the quarterback position? Well, you, I made this comment. You, the quarterback position is the most unique position, in my opinion, in really all of sport where. Everybody's relying on you. Everybody's looking at you. You have the responsibility what the other 10 guys are doing. You have to uh, make all kinds of uh, decisions within 1.8 to 2.5 seconds. And you have to be a tough guy. You have to, you have to lead. Everybody's got their own. Uh, Drew Brees to Pete Manning to Tom Brady, how they lead. And uh, Drew, uh, uh, Dwayne really took a step, really took a step. No more important than the last play of the game when he uh, dropped his pads and had to get in there, and he got in there. Why do you think that happened? Had there been ongoing discussions about oh, sure. that? I just I think Ryan Day is a great football coach, and uh, I think the two of them, you know, 
everybody has big dreams, and part of being a big dream is being that guy that can move a team, up, not just throw a pretty pass, but uh, do the things that you have to do to get one game. And, and understanding what you've had at that position the last few years, like how much did you feel that missing from the offense, that, that element? Well, it's, yeah, it's been missing big time. But uh, you know, you got to make those yards up somewhere. And obviously, yard-wise, we're at one of the top offenses in America. We've picked them up in the past game. But the tougher the opponent, you're going to have to, you know, just the sheer numbers of the college game, you're going to have to find a way to get those yards. Front row middle. Dave? Thayer Mumford got rolled up on. How is he doing? Do you expect that he'll play this week? Yeah, he's probable. Uh, just a matter of fact, the last 20 minutes I saw him, and uh, he's, he's doing good. I think we'll get some practice out of him tomorrow. Offensively this year, when you guys go up tempo, it looks like that's your most effective plan, at least to me. Is that are you seeing that when you analyze the film that up tempo is most effective? Oh, it was effective Saturday. You know, it kind of wore him out. Uh, very big, strong team that uh, got wore out a little bit. Uh, a lot of it's game management of the entire scenario: offense, defense, kicking, etc. So, those are game management decisions as we go. Uh, front row right here, Austin. Urban, and back to the defense. I think if these numbers, the total defense would be the worst in school history. And that's really a mouthful. I wonder, is, that's not just a one game thing. Have there been conversations with the staff? Have they justified that it's not as bad as those numbers would make it seem? What have those staff discussions been like? Uh, uncomfortable and, and uh, direct, uh, direct. And when I'm sitting around here, win the moment. The moment is to get ready for this next one, not to worry about what happened against Oregon State or even last week. And that's hard to do. Your question is legit and very uncomfortable to discuss, but our players deserve our best, and that's the focus on today, and that's what's coming next. And so one thing that Coach Giano characterized on Saturday was that, you know, it's one week. In college football, oftentimes, you can look like a very different team from one week to the next. How does this defense get where it needs to be to win in a rivalry situation on Saturday? Correct, you know, game plan and spend a ridiculous amount of time in there from 6 a.m. to probably 11 tonight and come up with a scheme and make sure our checkers in the right place. And, and uh, my job is to make sure our team is rested. And, uh, you know, it's a busy week at the band here yesterday. We have senior tackle, we have Thanksgiving, and then we got the rival. And the quad brews for Weber. Will he He's play? good. Yeah. Front row middle. Bill. Baron Brownie's clear, too. Uh, Michigan's defense is. Best in the country by a, by a lot. When you watch them on tape, what stands out to you and, and how big a challenge is this going to be? <laughs> Whenever you face an elite team, uh, elite defense, which they are, uh, the personnel stands out, the uh, front seven stands out, and also very good. I think they're number one in the nation in pass defense. And uh, there's very good personnel, very well thought out scheme, and very good defense. And you guys are underdogs for the first time in a long time. Your record in those kind of games is, is very good. What is, what's your message to the team about the fact that even though you're 10 and 1, just like Michigan is, there are a lot of doubters about this team. We don't we don't talk about those things. Uh, we talk about how to. It's really about game. We have a senior on our most prepared team to win the game. It's not who's favored and who's not. Well, I, didn't, I didn't know that. And I don't imagine our team really does. I guess. I mean, if they if they are, then they're looking at their own stuff. They're going to be working on how they win their individual battle against the As a psychology major, I imagine you're going to use that later in the I don't think I will. I don't, I don't usually go in those directions. But it depends on what kind of team you're dealing with. You know, one side's about getting everybody healthy, one side's about getting some confidence. And you know, play your very best <coughs> in the biggest game of the year. Front row left, Doug. Urban, um, as you mentioned, I think you got your second in the nation in yards. Per game on offense, you're eighth in the nation in points per game on offense. We know with Dwayne and this style of quarterback, it's just different what you've done most of your career. To be at this point with the top ten offense, clearly, just how do you feel about how you guys have, have made this work with Dwayne's skill set, what you like to do offensively? You've changed in the course of the season, but here you are. What's it been like, and how, how would you evaluate it? Oh. Well, we're an evaluation-friendly business. I would evaluate, you know, other than I think we have seven fumbles for the uh, seven turnovers, I believe, or I think it's seven fumbles. Uh, that's always my concern. Uh, my concern, if you recall, several weeks ago was red zone offense and, and balance. And you're seeing our, our guys have worked tremendously hard at that. I think Ryan Day has done a phenomenal job. Um, 
doing and, and you don't try to force this, you know, the square peg in a round hole and say, okay, we're going to run JT's offense or Tebow or Braxton offense. You're going to run the Alex Smith. You're going to run the Chris Leak offense that we've had to do. And we've researched the archives, but this game's changed so much anyway. So I think our offense staff's done a pretty good job. And obviously the players, I think, have done a very good job. And, and along the, the lines of just a game like this, when you, regardless of who's favored or anything like that, when you're playing any team where the talent is, is equal, right? I mean, they're very talented, you're very talented, versus times during the year when it's just clear you guys have more talent than the team you're facing. How do you coach differently? Do you take any more risks in a game where it's equal talent, where if we just butt heads all game, we're not maybe guaranteed to win? How does a coach approach that? Well, it's our seventh one. And uh, like you said, it's it's never been, in my opinion, the, the talent differential uh, has always been extremely close. And uh, also when you play you know, Penn State, I think Michigan State's very close. And um, you've seen it, you know, for me to say how we play, you've seen it over the years. And we're going to do what we have to do, we think, at the time to win the game. And uh, does that involve maybe more risk, more this, more that? I think it probably does. You know, you're probably a little more conservative when it is a, a team that you're better than. But that's all game. Those are we're going to have stuff available. It just sounds going during the game. Second row right, Rob. Urban.